Are you looking to master the Microsoft Power BI tool and looking for a way to learn and master the data analytics tool, Microsoft Power BI? My name is Shaggy Budin and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Excel Island where we are trying to learn and master Microsoft Power BI over the next 100 days. Today is day 25, we've been doing quite a lot of learning so far for the past 24 days. So welcome back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to support this live stream by subscribing to the channel right now. Put on your notification bell so you'll be the first to know whenever I go live or drop a new content on the channel. Also, all the task set exercise files, Power BI files that I'll be using to learn and master Microsoft Power BI over the next 100 days is already linked under the YouTube description. Do make sure to download them and practice along with me. Without further ado, let's get back to learning because we are starting a new course in, we are starting a new chapter rather, in a new course that we, start, we started quite a couple of two live streams uh, backward. So welcome back to the channel once again. So we're actually using the data camp platform so far for, for over the past uh, 24, 25 days. And we're actually on a topic on a course called data transformation in Power BI, which is, which is actually uh, learning how to use the Power Query Editor to transform and fine tune our data set and prepare the data set for analysis. So let me show you what the career track actually looks like if you are new to the channel. So we are on the data analysis in Power BI career track and we are 32% throughout the whole career track. The goal is 100% over the next 100 days. I've also done the data analysis in Power BI when I started live streaming on the channel. You can catch some lessons on, on SQL, rather data analysis in SQL when I started live streaming on the channel. So you can catch some lessons on SQL and practice also with SQL. Also, we are starting the data analysis in Python after finishing this data analysis in Power BI career track. So you want to make sure to subscribe right now and put on your notification bell so you'll be the first one when I start the data analysis in Python career track also. If I click on the data analysis in Power BI career track, you can see, so we've covered quite a lot of courses, a lot of lessons so far. Do make sure to catch these lessons and live stream on the previous live stream on the channel. And I'm still working on this case study, coming up, coming up with a separate video, especially for this case study, why I also try to fine tune and uh, practice my dashboard design skills also. So let's continue from this data transformation in Power BI. We've covered two topics so far in this particular course. So we've covered two chapters rather in this particular course. We are starting the third chapter today. So I just continue straight up without any delay. So let's get back to learning and owning our skills in Power BI. Right, a lot to cover. So let me just choose my headsets really quick there. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back. I'm hoping you're enjoying the course so far. My Absolutely. name is Marta van den Broek and I'll be your help for this part of the course. Custom columns are one of the most flexible tools you will use in Power Query. By using them, you will be able to modify your tables almost like an Excel spreadsheet. In this lesson, we'll also start to learn a little bit about the heart of Power Query, M language. Custom columns are an extremely flexible tool in Power Query. They allow you to modify your queries by writing in a simple scripting language called mLanguage, which comes from Data Mashup. This is somewhat similar to DAX language, but has some key differences, such as the fact that it is case sensitive. We'll learn more about M in the next lesson. Previously, you learned to apply numerical transformations, such as adding a constant value to your column, but it wasn't possible to sum up two columns into one new column. However, by using custom columns, you are able to do this and much more. We can even extend the functionality of the conditional column feature by using logical operands, such as AND, OR and NOT, to check several columns for our desired conditions. Once you understand custom columns, it will quickly become the most frequent feature you will use in Power Query. There are several basic operations that can be used when creating custom columns. You can use basic arithmetic operations to combine numerical columns together by adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing or exponentiating them. This can be useful if you are trying to compute total sales from a quantity and price column, like we see in this example screenshot. Text columns can be concatenated together with the ampersand operation. This will work similarly to the merge columns transformation you learned earlier. 
You can also use comparative logic operations, such as less than and greater than, to compare column values together. Together with conditional logic operations, such as AND, OR, and NOT, you will be able to build some complex conditional columns that you couldn't make just by using the regular conditional column feature in Power Query. You must be mindful of the data types of the columns that you are using, as any type mismatches are likely to result in an error. In addition, if any rows have a null value in either column, the resulting custom column will also contain a null value for that row. A very powerful application of custom columns is combining them with the group by transformation, which you've already learned previously. This transformation usually aggregates the values in a certain column using an aggregation function such as sum or average. However, using the all rows aggregation allows you to apply advanced transformations with custom columns. The all rows aggregation divides your data into several smaller tables according to the grouping that you selected in your group by function. Together with custom columns, you can alter the data in these tables using table M functions. A good example of this is being able to group sales data into product categories, then ranking each product category to sales performance in its own category. This may sound difficult to accomplish at first, but you'll find that it can all be done in a few steps by using custom columns in Power Query. You will apply these concepts to Northwind's inventory data to prepare it for analysis. Okay, so it's using custom columns and using the M language in Power BI. So how many columns can you refer to when creating a single conditional column with the custom column feature in Power Query? Hmm? How many columns? That wasn't stated, but probably if we use more than one column yeah, when creating custom columns. Let's see. Exactly. So we could use unlimited excellence by using conditional logic operators such as AND or you are able to make multiple conditions that refer to many different columns in your custom conditional column. That's interesting to know. Okay, we're going to custom column demo. As the name implies, custom columns are very customizable and have a wide array of uses. Once you master the concept of using them, you will quickly find that they will become one of the most flexible tools in your arsenal for preparing data. In this demo, we'll be looking at a sample of sales data from the Northwind Traders dataset that you've been working with. We are interested in analyzing the sales value for the orders. However, we are provided with a unit price column, quantity column, and a discount column. Therefore, our first step should be to add a column to our data containing the gross sales value, which is the unit price multiplied by the quantity. Let's add a custom column. You can type the column name, then press tab to autocomplete, or you can double click the column name in the available columns window to the right here. Don't forget to name your column as well. Now you'll notice that the column doesn't have a specific data type. This is important to note. By default, any custom column you create will have the data type any, so make sure to change it before you load your query into Power BI. We need to factor in the discount percentage now to arrive at the net sales figure. We can add another column or we can modify the formula for the custom column we just created by clicking on the gear icon. Remember to use the parentheses here as the order of operations does matter when you are creating custom columns. Another great feature of custom columns is the ability to implement complex conditions using logical operations like AND, OR and NOT as well as use a formula as an output for a conditional column. Let's say that there was a special offer that was running for this period of sales where customers that bought more than 50 units of the same product received an additional 5% discount for that product. However, this offer was not applicable to condiments or confections. We can implement this using a custom conditional column. Once again, let's add a custom column. This custom column checks for three conditions at once for each row in your dataset, and also outputs a formula if the conditions are all true, both of which are not possible with the regular conditional columns feature in Power Query. 
Finally, let's look at combining the group by feature in Power Query together with custom columns. We'll use the all rows aggregation in the group by operation. This results in a table that contains two columns, one with the categories and another that condenses all the columns in our previous dataset. We can see a preview of this data by clicking on any of the cells in the grouped column. We want to rank each order by the highest sales in each product category. In order to do this, we must sort the condensed tables, then add an index column. We'll use the table.addIndex column and table.sort functions to do this. It may look like nothing happened at first, but if we go to the new column, we added and preview the table in one of the rows, we can see that the ranking column was added successfully. Once you get the hang of writing M functions, which we will cover in the next lesson, you will find that with custom columns, the possibilities are truly endless. Knowing M column is like trying to get the code, coding part of Excel, just like VBA. So the M language is just exactly like VBA language, which is not quite that easy to learn, but very, very interesting to play around with. So let's practice these three, three uh, challenges, which is stock ranking, stock values, grouped stock ranking for this section. So I'm just going to read the instruction, stock ranking. So not when traders has a large selection of products in their catalog, and they wish to perform some analysis on stock levels to understand their inventory more. We will use index columns together with the group by feature to easily display the information on stock ranking within the company's product catalog. If you encounter the warning, please specify how to connect, click edit credential and choose service dots. Ooh, okay. So I've always faced this challenge quite well. If I'm using uh, the actual Power BI files on my data sets, let me try to open this workbook uh, from my data sets here. On my local machine do remember you have access to all the data sets under the YouTube description the files also so i'm to open stock stock ranking the power bi that is 3.1 so i'm opening my power bi machine here but i could also use the power bi interface integrated on data camp here Okay, this is getting ready. Why well, this is also getting ready? Okay, let me use this first and test it if I could troubleshoot it following this in instruction here. So open the workbook from the exercise for that. Then put the power query editor. You definitely need to open the power query editor because we are working with the M language. You can see. So I don't have access to the products data, but if I go to the source here, I see the data state is actually on the data camp platform, which I have also downloaded. I could just edit the data source here and point to this product table from my local machine there on my desktop, which I'll just go to data sets and just copy the link to the product. Ooh. I don't have access to the products here. Not twin products. Is it the not twin products? Let me open it on following this. Okay, this is getting ready. Okay, let me see. I want to see what the product looks like following this. Let me use the interface here. So this is the file I want to open right here. 3.1, which is this stock ranking. So I really need to know which product am I pointing to? But I'm guessing this not wind 
I have nothing products here. So that this should be, I have the file here called nothing products, which is this one here. Nothing products. I'll just copy it as a file parts. Copy as parts. I'll move that away and just paste the parts right there. So it is going to add all these transformation steps by default. So if I click on OK now, you can see I'm back. Yeah. So it is going to add promoted headers. You can see from the source, the headers is the first way. Yeah? Promoted headers, remove other columns and change the tag type. So that was what has been done by default. So I'm on track. So let's go back to following the instruction. So we are. Let me just open it right here also to compare both files. If I'm actually on the right file for the exercise. Aha, I think I'm on the right track. Products ID. Let's see. Let me compare it with this. Mm, they are the same, but I'm having this special character here. Yeah? Doesn't really matter, but because of where it is coming from, you can see that kind of like special character. Okay, we are on track. So let me just follow the instruction right here and let's do this. So, from the exercise folder, then open the park where we've done that. Sort the table by unit stock column in descending order. So, let me use my power BI unit stock here, yeah, unit stock column in descending order. This is unit stock. We're going to sort it in descending order. And it's from highest to lowest. Then add an index column starting from one. Name this column overall stock rank. Overall stock. I'll just go to the add column tab. Then add an index column from one. So it's going to add a new column from one. I could just drag it to the right, but let's leave it at the end there. So you're just adding uh, ranking columns just according to the rows that we have in our data set. So you can see one, two, three. That's what the index column is doing, one, two, three. So we have to call this index column overall stock rank. So let's rename the column. Stock rank. So we've done that real quick there. The next instruction says group the data by category name creating two aggregations total stock with sums with some the units in stock column grouped which applies the aggregation all rows. Oh, let's be patient here. Eh? We have to group the data by category name creating two aggregations. Okay, let's see. Group the data. But if we go to the transform tab, if we use the group by feature right here. Eh? Okay. Then we also use the advanced feature, I guess. So, group data by category name, creating two aggregations. Okay, aggregation, I can add an aggregation. This is the first aggregation, and I can add another aggregation. This is the second aggregation. Okay, interesting. So, total stock, we sum the unit in stock column. We're going by the category name. So, let's select the category name right here. Category name right here. We are not adding any other grouping, just one grouping. We are grouping a new column we will call total stock. This is going to be called total stock, which is going to be a sum operation. We are actually summing the units in stock column. So units in stock column, then another aggregation. We are calling this aggregation groups. The column will be called groups. Group which is going to be which applies the aggregation all rows. Ooh, where is all rows? Okay, this is aggregation called all rows. What are we which column are we using for this? Column grouped which applies the aggregation all rows. Then we won't be using a column to perform this. I can say I can't even select any column right here. I can delete that. So we're going to use all rows for the grouping. So let's see how that looks like. Okay. So it's going to group it by the category name. Total stock 
will be sum for each unit in stock then grouped using all rows okay quite interesting aha you can see so this is the category name total stock and grouped so if i click on the table here you could actually see oh okay it is taking me deeper into that table you can see product id product name category id unit price units in stock then for that category name you should only have one category for beverages can you see that okay quite if i cancel these steps it should take me back to this group you can see the category name beverages seafood condiments meat poultry and so on this is the total stock for each category but if you want to see the grouping quite deep if i click on seafood I'm going to see each product ID for seafood, for the product name of seafood, for that category ID of seafood with the category name seafood, and so on. That's quite interesting. So, next one says sort the column by total stock in descending order. You have to sort it by total stock in descending order. Okay, that means seafood is the highest there. Add another index column from one, name the new column category stock rank we have to add another index column so add column index column from one which is going to be here and we call that index column category stock rank category stock rank done which category has the greatest of our stock, which is seafood? We saw that already. Seafood. Perfect. You use the group by feature to summarize your data. Then rank this summarized table to find which category has the greatest of our stock. Quite interesting. So the next instruction is stock values. We are performing this stock values operation. Probably we are still going to be using same data set to perform this tax. So after calculating category stock rankings as well as overall stock rankings, it is important for the management team at Northwin to be able to see the dollar value of their stock levels. So you will use the custom column feature to calculate how much each product stock is worth. In addition, your manager has asked you to check if any of the products from the most stock category are on back order. That is less product in stock plus on order than the other level. We have less product in stock, then there's an order than the other level. Okay, that means there's low stock and there's more order for that particular product. If you lost any progress, so we, don't, we didn't lose any progress, let's continue using this file that we have here. So expand the group columns, selecting all columns except the category name column. Make sure to on select use original column as prefix so we want to expand this group column here i'll just click on this right here i'm going to select all column except the category name i'll select all columns except this category name so we want to bring in all these results all this column from scratch then let's uncheck this use original column as prefix if i click on ok it's going to expand data sets for me wider back to its original form like it is actually back to the original form but with more information right now so if you continue add the custom column that calculates the total amount of unit stock and units in order name this column stock plus orders okay we're going to create a custom column add column you can see the custom column feature here then what do you want to call this custom column? add a column that is completed from the other columns so i want to use other columns here for the calculation the name of the column should be stock plus ordered. Let's call it stock plus ordered. Then let's see this calculation we want to perform. Add a custom column that calculates the total amount of units in stock and units in order. That's units in stock. Units in stock. that should be plus let's see if the plus which is going to work plus units in order works fine you can see we just calculate the total there no syntax error has been detected if we click on ok we should have a new column calculating that 
perform that calculation for us rather click on ok ah, i can see stock plus all that we have that calculation right there which is just using this unit in stock this this 123 plus 0 112 plus 0 you can see that so that's just what the calculation is doing there add another custom column that calculate the total value of the stock plus all that column using the unit price name this column stock plus order value so let me just create a custom column first and give it a name and we go back to the instruction to perform that calculation the column will be called the column will be called stock plus ordered value let's call it stock plus ordered value okay then what do we do for that calculation stock plus ordered column okay add another custom column that calculate the total value of the stock plus ordered column using the unit price column okay let's say stock plus other column using the unit price column are we unit price column okay i'm trying to see we are going to calculate okay let's see the calculation add another custom column that calculate total value since this is total that should be plus also plus units unit what unit price okay let's add that you can see stock plus ordered value stock plus ordered so the unit price column let me see unit price you can see we have unit price here 18 plus 4 i'm guessing the calculation is probably multiplication but let's see add an addition okay i'm still worried that this calculation should be multiplication since another column custom column that calculate the total value of the stock plus all that column using the unit price name this column stock plus all that value well, let me just go back there and change this custom column calculate the same plus let's use multiplication there it quite makes sense to make use of multiplication let's see i'll click on okay Mm -hmm. we could just go back and edit it if we didn't get the calculation correctly no i'm done there so let's take another custom column right now so add the, another cost add the custom column called is back or that so the custom column is going to be called is back or that so this calculation is going to be which evaluates whether any of the products in the top category are on back order category stock rank equals to one hmm. a product is in back order if the stock plus order that is less than the other level this column should output to if the product is back ordered and false otherwise so we just said okay i can see the calculation here let's open two brackets a bracket so we put the category stock rank i think that is category stock rank yes equals to one let me close the bracket that is our calculation so no syntax error there click on ok you can see it's true false so that what the calculation is they say a product is on back order if the stock plus order is less than the real order level this column should have put two if the product is on back order and false otherwise quite interesting filter the table to only have products on back order i'm going to filter the table to only have product on back order that means uh it's back order which is two which is two that's interesting then you say what product is on back order what product is on back order you say maybe probably what product is as the is back order so let's look at the product name is it seafood category name product name 
we have a lot of product on back order but we are seeing this boston crab meats you can see it is, is the highest though Ooh. We have quite a lot of product on back. We have the Boston Crab Meat here. It is the product name. Total stock. The social says filter the table to only have product on back order, which is going to be true. Okay, let me filter. So if it's on back order, it's going to have. To, I instruction. A product is on back order if the stock plus order is less than the other level. This column should output to if the product is on back order and false otherwise. It said if the stock plus order is less than the other level. If I unfilter it, stock plus order is less than the other level. You can see the other level here. This is the other level here, which is 30. Stock plus order is less than the other. This is high than this is the other level. But remember that this calculation here. Okay, let me go back to this calculation here, which is this stock plus order. Let me edit that. That's what I did. I think I did. I did multiplication there. Let's take it back to addition and see the difference mm -hmm. okay then you can see 141 the other level 131 20 okay now if you add this custom column now this is for this two of us mm -hmm. now let's filter it back again to only show for two you can see only two products we see almost the same thing almost the same the same Order that is on the other it is, it now says which filter the table and say what product is on back order is not okay it's not even it's not what product is on not is not on you can see the boston crab meat there a slang seal you can see it there you can see this combo is this not i can't find anything not there I can see this combo. You can see this combo here. So I think this is the answer. This nod. Aha, perfect. It's, you were able to find the product from the most stock category seafood that is on back order. We should definitely order some more. Okay, is is on back order means it is not in stock. Is that so I couldn't I didn't understand that word back order. But if you read the instruction. If I read according to the context here, yeah, I go back a little bit. It says a product is on back order if the stock plus order is less than the other level. This column should output two if the product is on back order. So if the product is on back order, it should be two and four otherwise. So we're expressing that means there's a misconception somewhere here. Yeah, probably I didn't do it pretty well, but I was pretty close to the instruction. If I clear the filter. Okay, let's do instead of doing two, let's select four this time around. You can see we have quite a lot here. We look at the product name is on back order force. That means they see enough in stock. Let's look at the stock plus stock plus order and the other level. And this stock plus order is higher than the other level. We have less the other here. They see over 125 in stock. But if you do the opposite for the two category, let's look at the stock plus ordered. The other level is also low. You can see the other level is zero, zero, zero. Stock plus ordered. I mean, you need to understand the concept of stock plus order, stock plus ordered value, and the level what. It's quite interesting we're able to tackle that challenge easily and probably i'll just do it one more time to understand this concept pretty well okay i think this is the last contest here stock group stock ranking the final one right here 
So it says your manager wants you to revisit the ranking of products by their stock levels. This time, they are interested in finding the products with the highest stock value for each of the categories that are stocked. So we want to see the product with the highest stock value for each of the categories of our products. This is similar to the step you already carried out. However, there is a subtle but important difference. Let's see how we can use an advanced custom column together with the group by feature to accomplish this. Okay, let's continue from where we stopped. Remove the filtered root steps. Let's remove this filtered root steps. Okay, we are back to the full data set. Even <coughs> after performing some custom column calculation there. <coughs> Next says group the data by category name, creating two aggregation again. Oh, okay. Let's perform some group. Group by calculate transform group by. Advanced grouping to cat aggregation by category name this time around. Category name grouping. The first grouping is total value, which sums the stock plus other value column. Total value. Total value. I'm pretty looking at total value. Let's call it total value. Total value, which sums the what? Let's look at the instruction. So the stock plus ordered value, stock plus ordered value, stock plus ordered value. Let's see that. And group which applies the aggregation all rules. Group as usual. Group one more time. Then this is all rules. No calculation there. Click on OK. So you can see it has grouped the whole table and summarized it for us. So the instruction now says add a custom column which saw the table contained within the group column in descending order using the stock plus ordered value. You will need to use table.sort function using the group as the first argument. Name this column sorted group. We want to add a custom column right now. Like seriously. Let's do that again. Add column, custom column. Then our custom column is going to follow. We are going to go the custom column. What's Name this column sorted group. Let's call it sorted group. Sorted group. Then the calculation is be quite interesting. So add a custom column which sorts the table contained within the group column in descending order using the stock plus ordered value column. Stock plus ordered value column. Even I can't even see the column here, which is quite funny. Because the first instruction here says group the data by category and creating to aggregation total value which sum the stock plus or that value then groups then the next instruction that says we need to create a custom column using a column that has been already been grouped which is funny though so we need to use the table dot sort function okay let's type table dot sort Use this here. I need to mention. I think I need to mention the table. Okay, quite interesting. I think I can do that. I'm going to use stock plus order value. What did I call the table for I need to remember the name I called the table for my own end. Stock. Plus, I think I did my ordered. Mine was named ordered. Let's see, it's going to give us, it is not giving us any syntax error. But I think I'm going to copy this and just cancel this step and try it again. Let me just go back to here. What did I call this table? I call it stock plus all that value. So I remember that's quite interesting. So it is correct. Let's create a custom column again. I'll just paste this back. Then we call this sorted group. Sorted group. Let's see if it's going to work fine. Ooh, you see. 
table does so make sure it is spelled correctly so it's now recognizing that name i spell stock plus ordered value it's not recognizing so that there's something wrong somewhere so i can do this step because it's not seeing this column if i try to perform a custom column i also make sure i'm using available columns from here which is not fair it says they add a custom column which saw the tables contained within the group column in the sending order using the stock plus ordered value column so this table is contained within the group column you will need to use table dot sort function using group as the first argument let's let's take a hint it doesn't out so, okay and this says column containing tables okay remember we, we didn't always store the external table we used to sort each table contained within the group column using the stock plus ordered value column. The table does sort function takes two arguments. The first one is the table you wish to start to sort, which is in this case are contained in the group column exactly. So the second argument is a list which contains the column you wish to sort by, with stock plus ordered value as well as as well as what sort criteria to use, order or descending order, ordered or descending. The code should look like this. So the code should look like this. Column containing tables, which is group, stock plus ordered value, then order O. That means I can actually group them even though it is grouped. So I need to just paste this back and go deeper into my group column, which is this one here. Quite interesting to note that you can go a step deeper. Column containing group tables. So I need to make sure. Okay, let me just clean this. Let's do it this way. I think I need to point to the group table. This is this one here. Okay, interesting. Then there will be a comma. Now I'm going to point to this table inside this group table. Quite interesting to note. So I'm going to order, state the order. I want to, it to be sorted. Order the descending. That should be a comma. Order the descending. Interesting. No syntax error. I think you can need to wrap this in double quotes because it is wrapping the query, the code here in double quotes. I don't think it is necessary. Let's see if it's going to work. And I can come back and wrap it in double quotes. It is not working. Probably I need to wrap it in double quotes. Let's wrap this in double quotes. Mm hmm. M language is quite interesting. Let's see again. So my code is not complete. So I'm missing something. Probably all those codes. Okay. following the instruction here yeah, I'm, I'm trying to follow, follow the code exactly so i need to wrap them in oh so i'm still getting this same error and i'm pretty sure i've done everything correctly table dot sorts open bracket groups then comma stock plus order value Oh, that's quite interesting. I'm running into an error there. So let's take a step back. This is why I group them for grouping. So my table is called what? Stock plus. Maybe I'm spelling that incorrectly. I'll just copy that right there. So I'll go back to this step here. And just paste it right there. So I paste same thing. So you see, I'm not spelling that correctly. So error, the name table dot sort wasn't recognized. Oh, oh, probably I'm having two table here. Yeah? Oh, you can see I'm having. Oh, my mistake was the table. It's supposed to be one table. Table dot sort. Oh, you can see. So I didn't pay attention there. Aha. So I was making a mistake in the table name. It's supposed to be one table. I'm adding two table. So that's work pretty fine. Happy to do that. We should do that real quick. 
can see. So I need to rename it the column as let's name it back as sorted group. So I could just go back to the step following. Okay, I'm let me just switch on my command. I'm following, I'm editing it right from here. I'll go back to my formula. So I, I can rename it sorted group. Sorted group, click on OK. You can see now it is better. Interesting. So add another custom column which add an index column starting from one called category group run to the to the table contained in the sorted group column you just created. You will need to use the table add index column function. So we need to use the same thing. <laughs> anyway, we're going to be using the same thing, but we're going to be using what another custom column which add an index column starting from one called category group rank to the table contained in the sorted group column you just created you need to use table dot add index column okay okay let's do that again table dot add index column but we don't know which table we are going to be using these are the custom column i could just paste my other oh let me paste this let me just cancel that so i could go back here and just copy this probably that means we want to use that same calculation but since I'm not using same calculation, table dot add in this column, then I'm going to mention the name. Okay, let's see if I can do it without looking at the code first. Probably I'm going to be seeking help. So the name of the column is going to be called uh, group rank. Uh, what is it, is it going to be called? Uh, grouped rank, exactly. Grouped rank. I'm going to use in add uh, add index table dot add index column. This is here, but the syntax we don't need the syntax. It should it should be quite helpful if you actually know the syntax of the of the code. Well, I think that's what that with the M language. It will show you the syntax while writing M language or even editing the Power Query editor. Even while using Power Pivot, you won't see the syntax. You have to make sure you know the syntax. So we're going to be using Add an index column sign from one called category group rank to the table contain the sorted group column. Name this column group rank. Add another custom column which add an index column starting from one called category group rank. So we know we are going to be using the table dot add index column, but we don't know the column we're going to be referencing. I'm going to be referencing okay groups. I'm going to be using this group, pretty sure. Probably I need to point to a new column. Table as table, new column as text. Well, let's just check. Let's select the ints and use this column containing sorted tables or oh, name of index column. Okay, so I'm going to point the code should look like this column. So the column containing sorted tables. So instead of using uh these groups i'm going to be using sorted tables sorted group okay sorted group comma i will just hit enter there what's with this now sorted group comma and i'm going to point to my name of the column in there so the column i want to use, name of the column okay now I'm going to point to hold on to call this column in there. So we want to call it category group rank. So we want to call that category category group rank. I think that is going to be in double quote also. If I'm not mistaken. You can actually edit it if it is wrong. The we stay is to start from one. It's going to be in double quotes, then comma starting from one. That's quite sense. And you can see no syntax error. That means the our code is correct. Let's click on OK. Uh, you can see that the group rank. Ooh, that's quite interesting. Then delete the group and sorted group columns. What? Why will I do that? Delete the group and sorted group columns. After all the stress, we still have to delete that. Group and sorted group column. Group 
I'll start that group column shift then delete actually is it delete or remove there's no delete here but if I remove it that should be off okay that's quite interesting expand the group rank column it's letting all columns except category name group rank want to expand it selecting all column except category name can see these are the columns we have right here after expanding it let's expand that and boom you can see we actually did a lot of steps right here you can see all the steps we've done wow that's quite interesting to see okay finally you can see we have quite a lot of ranking right here I'm definitely going to be passing through this one more time. Expand the group column, selecting all columns except category name. Next, filter the category group rank column to only have the highest value stock product in each category. Filter the category group rank column. Let's see that. Category group rank column. Category group rank column. To only have the words. So you only have the highest value stock product in each category highest value stock product in this category so how do we do that because then we only want to be seeing one one okay because it is grouping each category name so let's filter to only the first highest rank in this category you can see the ones in this category which is the highest rank there so the instruction now says which product has the highest value stock in the beverage category which product in the beverage category? You can see the beverage category. The product should be Cote de Belay. Quite interesting. This one here, absolutely. Oh, we know it. It's quite interesting. So if you could do this, you are you are killing the power query editor. You are even killing. You are aiming it. Perfect. A single bottle of Cote de Belay costs a whopping two sixty three dollars. And we have 17 in stock. Let's confirm that. So this is three dollars. Code de Belay. Let's see the actual price of that. That's quite correct. Two C three. We have 17 in stock. Quite interesting to see. This is quite a lot of steps that we've taken here. Oh, nice one. We finished this chapter three on on an awesome level. I was able to troubleshoot any challenge we had so far introduction to the advanced editor this is the advanced editor we have flag playing with the custom editor since we are going to the advanced editor on day 26 100 days of power bi so that where we stop today remember one chapter per each for each day or per each live stream and we'll be able to do justice on today's live stream this is quite interesting to see Alright, so thanks for staying to the end of the live stream. If you found value in this learning journey with me, do well to support the channel by hitting that subscribe button right now. Put on the notification bell so you'll be the first to know whenever I go live or drop a new content on the channel. And don't forget to subscribe here. Yeah, hit that subscribe button. That's the only way you can support the channel. If you're looking for other ways to support the channel, let me know in the comment section and I'll be happy to respond to your request. As usual, do have a wonderful day, wonderful nights, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you on the next day of the live stream. Peace out.